ein bisschen abergläubisch. Okay, obviously it's quite a lot of us, so we can keep it to two or three questions, maximum each. Thank you. Everyone recording that needs to be? Luke Littler, congratulations. One last week, backed it up this week. Just sum up how you're feeling after a dramatic night here in Manchester. I just glad I got over the line once again. Um, snuck into first by a point over Luke. But, yeah, the first game against Michael weren't really the best. And then I picked up against Nathan and Gezi. Does this one mean more than last week because of where we are? 100%. <laughs> Is that the only reason to say... Yeah. I know the first one's special, but yeah. can, can this be topped? Not at the minute. <laughs> Not until the next major. Or, yeah, but winning in front of these fans just means, means a lot. Top of the table now as well. You're top of this Premier League. That's some statement. Premier League debut, back-to-back -back wins, and now you are top of the pile against these established pros, almost rewriting the books here. Um, it, obviously, Emma said it's 24 points in to get you in. But I'm not just, just going to go next week and change my dart for something. I'm just going to have to keep plugging away and keep picking up more points. Are you looking at, or did you look at a points tally before the Premier League? And now do you feel that you are at the O2? I want to say I am at the O2, but I can't at the same time. Um, as soon as I see my name that says, a uh, little queue next that says qualified, then that's when I'm in. Luke, congratulations. Thank you. Luke, when you saw Gezi hit that nine dart in the semi-finals, were you expecting a lot more from him in the final? Um, I'd say so. But as we say, it's hard to back it up. As soon as you play well the next in one game, it's hard to back it up the next. And I, thought, I just thought he weren't really at it. He was very pacey. Um, he weren't at his normal throwing, but I just had to get on my game. And just describe the feeling of having 11,000 fans singing your, your walk-on song back to you. It was... Unbelievable, I think Nathan's was better than my walk on though. There's an exclusive group of players who won three in a row, what would that, what would that mean to you next week in Birmingham if you could do that? I think it would mean a lot, obviously it would be my, my third weekly win, but like I said i just got to keep picking up those points. And what have you learnt from this Premier League campaign so far? Um, it's tough every week, it's not easy, <coughs> and you just got to pick up points every week somehow. Cheers Luke. Thank you. Luke, this story just continues to roll on. Nine darters, winning on Euro Tour, Pro Tour debuts, and now you're top of the Premier League. Do you put your head on the pillow sometimes and think, what is going on here? Or do, do you pinch yourself at one stage and think, this is really happening, is this not a dream? I just try and live my life as I, as I have done. But I just, as a 17-year-old boy, I just know that travelling on Wednesday to Manchester, Birmingham, wherever, and just every week playing these guys who've been looking up to it I just thrive off it and it gets me pumped up for it and of course this week building up to it you've had all the spotlight on you as well with the BBC you literally went wall to wall on the BBC on, on Wednesday it, you've taken it in your stride and you've not only talked the talk you've walked the walk and won as well so again it's, how do you stop yourself getting carried away do you think you, do you actually just kind of manage to box it off somehow and just stay in your little zone that's that's all I do. I just stay in my zone. I, I communicate with people sometimes. If not, I just I just do what I do. Just put my airpods in and practice. Thank you. Luke, you beat Michael Van Gerwen again tonight. The third time in a row you've beaten him. Do you see yourself as favourite now when you go into games with Michael? Uh, we all know he's not playing to his best ability, and certainly I didn't against him. But the, the scrappier games are the better ones to win. Just drag yourself over the line. Um, but every time I've beat Michael, it's been pretty comfortable. Six twos or six threes. And then when he's beat me, we've had to go to his last leg. But, yeah, we know he's not playing well and I'm just glad to get the better of him while he's playing bad. <laughs> and we've seen particularly over the past two weeks, sometimes you've got that smooth action and sometimes you've got that stop. Do you think about that before you go on stage, what you're going to do, or is it just in the moment, whichever feels right? It's just those nine practice starts that we have. If I'm just throwing a smooth throw and I'm going in well. But if they're not going well, then I'll change it up and I'll just do what's comfortable for myself. We saw you, you did a media day with the BBC. You said to us months and months ago that you're not a morning person, so you're starting to get used to these early rides. <coughs> not really, but I was kind of needed to be up. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Luke. Thank you. Thank you. Luke, well, sorry. What match did you win when you went on stage? Yeah, 3-2. <laughs>
there was money you were winning that. How did you find out that it's obviously that happened we when were, you were, we were watching it? Yeah, so we were winning three two and then um someone scored. And then yeah, Cole Palmer we conceded a penalty and then he scored again. So that happened before the match. Yeah. Did that put you in a bad mood then? Yeah, I was like I'm winning this now. <laughs> yeah. It? yeah, it did. It's good for you to give. I mean, a lot of fans in the, in the stadium would have been like a bit disappointed with what happened at Chelsea. So you've been something to cheer about, haven't you? Yeah, there was a few um, Manchester United fans on the walk on when I was playing Aspel. I was like, I'm going to go out here now, and everyone knows we've lost. <laughs> but yeah, I was just, I was glad to win. Thank Luke, you. Uh, you had two uh, YouTubers in attendance today. What you've been clapping with over the past few weeks. Um, how obviously you're spending so much time doing other things away from the dartboard. How important are those, those collaborations to you to get more eyes on the sport? Um, it's just it's what I do. Obviously, I play FIFA pro clubs, and then um, Morgan and Jack they play pro clubs as well. So we've just all been playing, and it kind of just settles me down when I've got an off day, and I just chill with with them. You've obviously been on a few uh, YouTuber podcasts recently as well. Uh, me and you aren't that dissimilar in age, and obviously I grew up watching the Sidemen like you did. Was that quite a bit of a pinch pinch me moment in your journey so far? It was just crazy. Obviously, I met um, Ethan at the Worlds, but to meet JJ and Harry, it was just like a dream come true. I've been watching them for many years since they've all been playing FIFA, and that's where I started watching them from. And how, like obviously, they'll have a completely different audience to to the normal darts viewers. How important is that? to get getting new eyes onto the sport you doing things such as that it may help the sport it may not but I'm just grateful for getting these opportunities to go on podcast and visiting all these places cheers Luke Good thank nice. you Luke um, just for me in terms of Liverpool coming up in a few weeks uh, you know you are quite clearly a, a red Man United fan are you going to be ready for the reception you might get there I've been waiting since we beat them in the FA Cup <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I think Gezi's I think they've been on Gezi's side but I'm just going to have to just plug away and get those points Will that motivate you do you think to, to get it done and maybe silence the crowd? Yeah if, if I do win then I will silence them but I'll just do it until I won't do anything if I win and if I, do, if I don't win then it'll be good luck to Gezi Spot on there. thank you Luke, uh, you averaged 114 in Van Gogh against Marco Van Gogh and you've hit three nine darters already. Do you believe you are the best scorer on tour? Um, I'm up there with the very best. Um, but that's what that's what helps us the most, scoring. And you've got to find your way to the double end of it. And you've done some amazing things while you've, you've played darts. You've had some amazing experiences. You've been on the Jonathan Ross show. You know, you've been on the Happy Hour podcast. How has that support impacted you has it helped your game it has and like I said it's just when it's an off day I'm getting these opportunities to meet these guys who I've been looking up to and just have a normal chat with them and just talk about them about what I do in my spare time it just chills me out and you've already won a players championship you've won on the Euro Tour have you already exceeded your expectations for this year or did you have you aspired to achieve even more than what you already have I just just come to the Premier League every week. Um, if there's a Pro Tour on the weekend, then we'll go straight to the, the Pro Tour or the Euro Tour. But now I've, I don't want to set um, any expectations or win any majors. I just let me dance through the talking and see where they land. Thank you. Luke, you're going to watch Mania this weekend? No. I'm not into it anymore. Nah. <laughs> that's where we walk on come from. Yeah, that's what I say. You're going to 33, nah. Might watch the main event. Does Cody finish the story? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everyone.